Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm gonna to show you, yes, yet one more type of watercolors. I keep buying more and more because I just love them. And these are the Dr. P.H. Martin watercolors that are very bright, so they inspired me to do an interactive rainbow card. This is the little fox that's going to go in my card. He's from Mama Elephant. And this is some Distress watercolor cardstock. I'm gonna use the smooth side and it's very white, so it's gonna make my clouds look really white. And these cloud dies are from Lawn Fawn, Stitched Clouds. All the supplies will be linked down below and on my blog, but you can see here I've got them cut in tiers so that I can put the little rainbow in the center portion. And the rainbow is from Paper Smooches. I love how all of these companies play so nicely together. The stamp from one company, one set of dies from another, and another die from a third. And they all are gonna play very beautifully on this interactive card. I wanted to do some partial die cutting and that means I only want to cut out the round parts of the rainbow. I don't want to cut out that bottom edge and you can see the plates are aligned so that there's pressure on the round part but not on that edge. So the edge is not going to cut and you'll see why that plays into it as I get moving on this card. And here's how it die cut out. Just separate the little pieces but they're all connected at the bottom because then I don't have to tape them together when I put them on the card. And when you see how the card goes together, you're going to know why that would be a real big pain in the drain to do. And it also would make it, make it not function nearly as well. So here's what it looks like with the rainbow tucked in and those edges cut off just so they hide behind that front cloud. And now I'm ready to paint with my Dr. PH Martins. I bought set number three and the uh, instructions I thought were really funny on their projects because step one says draw the truck like really honestly draw the truck <laughs> okay um, yeah so I hear there is a video on YouTube showing you how to paint the truck and following along with that project so I will link you to that in the description down below if I find that video because I want to go see what it's all about this was the first time I opened them so I thought I would test them all out and I just put a drop of each one onto a ceramic tile that I got for, I think, a buck, under a buck at the hardware store. I thought that would be a, a nice way to, uh, to look at colors and see them against white. And dropping colors in to try to figure out what they're going to look like, because I wasn't sure what colors I even had. I just randomly picked, a, picked one that was available. Um, so the one, two, three sets. Um, I don't have all of those lists on my blog. But if I ever get them all, then I'll do a big roundup of all of the colors. This one has, as you can see, lots of the bright reds and yellows, a little bit of purple, a little blue, and a little, little bit of turquoise, and a couple of browns. So it seemed to have a decent selection for somebody like me. And when you hit them with water, you can see they run really well and they stay good and bright. And the bright color was what inspired me to do a rainbow. And when I was trying to figure out what to do with the rainbow rather than just have a rainbow on the card, I wanted to make it interactive. So I've created this, this little mechanism that you're gonna see that is really a whole lot of fun. And I'm going to uh, move the color around with the brush and go from one color into another and then move the colors on up the rainbow. And I am heat setting in between so that the color doesn't touch the color behind it. And meaning that you know when watercolor is wet and it touches other wet things, it'll start to run. So the little cardstock shim in there is going to protect any of that color from going on to the next little little piece of rainbow and it's also thick enough that it's going to make sure it doesn't go through. One other thing I want to mention about these Dr. PH Martins is I've seen them on a couple other sites and I was like wow that price is really different than the price that I paid for them what the heck is up with that and what I found was that there is a half ounce set and there's a full ounce set. This is the full ounce set. And I, at first I was distraught because distraught I thought I paid way too much for them. And then I realized, oh, no, no, no. The other set is half the size. You get half the color. Now this color is going to last a long time, but if you want the better deal, then I would go for the large bottles just because the price point seems to be a whole lot better. I wanted to try and see what would happen if I dabbed color off because, you know, I do that a lot when I watercolor and I wanted to see if the colors stayed nice and bright and they definitely do. So that was a good thing to find out. The heat gun that I'm using here in between all of these 
is my Wagner and it's a new one to me, uh, sold by Hero Arts. And this one, I think, replaces the Milwaukee, which is no longer being made. And I had been waiting for a long time to get one. And I was on all kinds of waiting lists and stores all over the place. And I guess they don't make it anymore. So the Wagner seems to be the good replacement. And it is super hot. Like, it nearly burned my fingers a couple times. It nearly burned my paper. I actually got a little bit of a uh, corner of brown on this when I did it. Fortunately, it was on an area that doesn't show on the card, so I could hide that. But it dries really, really fast. Now I wanted to make some spray to put in the background because I thought these these paints are actually, they feel more like inks when you're messing around with them with a brush. So I thought, let's drop a little bit into a, a mister. And so I did two drops of the bluish color and one drop of the turquoise color. I don't remember if that's the colors that are named on the bottles, <laughs> but I'll put that in the description down below. So you'll know, don't quote me on exactly what those colors are. I'm I'm trying to get this voiceover done so I can get the video finished. So here is the spritzing of it. I just thought I'd test it out on a scratch piece and see what I, how the color came out and I liked how it came out. So I'm just going to spray the bottom of each piece so the tops of the clouds are a little whiter than the bottom side. So you can see how it goes on with little drips and so that little drips make it look a little watercolory. But on the background, the one that's the full panel, I wanted just a solid blue. I wanted it to kind of disappear, but be the same color as the shading and everything else. And I was very surprised that dabbing this off made a perfectly flat color. Like there's, you could actually get a really nice flat color with these. I was, I was happily surprised. So next we have the little foxes. These are from the Tandem Edition set from Mama Elephant. There's a whole, whole other set with other critters in it, but I really love foxes, so I had to get just the fox set. The sentiments in this are also absolutely amazing. This one I decided I was going to paint with a brush, and I'm just picking up color, and there's only the little bit of water that's in my brush. I'm trying to see what these colors look like full strength. I think this orange is probably a little more watered down than the other colors I use. But I'm just going to paint it on. I am going to trim him out. So I decided, you know, I don't have to worry about staying in the line. So we're, we're just going to paint away. Now, I like to layer colors on my paper. And I know that's not how a lot of people do it. You can easily mix up your own color on a palette and get the perfect shade of red-orange that you want. But I wanted to see how these do with my normal color layering ideas. So... That's what I, I'm trying here. The red really went on strong and really took over. So I think I'm going to be watering these down at least a little bit when I paint with them. So I'm adding more, oh, a little bit more water to try to blend out that into the, the orange and it just totally did take over. So the strength of the, and the color intensity here is pretty amazing. And uh, they will, they will be needing a little bit of watering down, but what I decided to do was see what happens if I dab it off and then layer more color on. So I'm going to just layer on some orange and it started making a really nice red orange color, which is what I was going for anyway. So it worked. The Distress Watercolor cardstock tends to get this little bit of a texture to it and that was totally fine with me. So uh, was just working with that as, as I was painting. And there I apparently magically made <laughs> <laughs> some shading with the brown color and then just moved it around a little bit with my brush and it blended very nicely. I was very impressed with how it did. This other little fox is going to be a, be a background piece in the mechanism so I just wanted to throw a little bit of color on there in case it, he, anything of him shows up. So I heat set this so that I could do the next stage in the water coloring which was to put a little shading around the face. And it, I wanted to do some sort of a gray, but there isn't any brown that you could really make a gray out of. So I did it with blue and dabbed it off. And then since the heat, heat setting had dried the watercolor, I could then go in with a brush and add some texture to the little fur. And I added some little white dots with my Signo pen to the little guy's eyeballs. So fussy cut him out. And I want to show you especially how I fussy cut this. I, actually, it's not very fussy in my cutting. So I'm cutting way inside the lines because I wanted to have a fox to line the other fox up with because I need to have some adhesive between them. And I wanted something big enough to make sure it covered the entire adhesive 
and gave the, the fox in the front enough room to hang on, and then I need a little arm down at the, the bottom below him. While I had all this watercolor out, I thought, wait a minute, I gotta use all this color for something because <laughs> you can't just let it sit there, right? So I just started dabbing watercolor paper into it and making backgrounds. That's a really fun thing to do with any supplies you have left over when you're doing any kind of stuff like this, whether it's spraying and picking up things with, with extra pieces of paper. So I went in with a paper towel and started dabbing color off to make sort of an agate look to these pieces of paper. And it worked really beautifully. I'll show you the two cards that I made with those at the very end of the video. So now I'm assembling the card. I've glued the background clouds on and I'm gonna put my little fox onto the other little fox on the mechanism. And now I have to figure out how to line that up because I want the fox to slide around on the rainbow like he's on a little roller coaster. So I found a scrap of round paper, something that was die cut in my stash and it fit perfectly. So I folded it in half so I could mark a center. I could line it up in two different directions and find the center of what that circle would be. And I took my piercer right in the middle and I made a hole. So that's the start of it. And then I want to put this little guy so that he lines up, his little bottom lines up on the bottom of the rainbow. And I want to poke the hole through. I want to make sure that that piece is centered over that spot and then poke a hole through there. And I'm going to leave the piercer in there for a second and just check to make sure he rides all the way around so that I've got that piece centered the way I need it to be. And he does just perfectly. How cute is that? So I put a little brad in there and then the rest of it is just going to be assembly with dimensional adhesive to make it thick enough so he has a little place to move around in. So I'm going to put some of the 3M tape along the bottom, which I call the precious and make sure I drew even some little lines there so I wouldn't put any extra adhesive in any of the areas where it would keep his little mechanism from going around the card. I'll glue it on and then test him again to make sure he all works perfectly. And then I added more dimensional adhesive to the front, but I didn't want to add something quite so thick, so I added power tabs this time. And here is the finished card with him riding around his little rainbow! Oh my gosh! Is that not just the most adorable little thing you've ever seen? Oh, I'm just so excited. There's a couple other things that I wanted to do with a something that spin, spins around this way. So you might see more of this in the future. Who knows? And here's one of the cards that I made with that crazy background. I just added one of the sentiments from the same Mama Elephant set and a couple of pretty pink posh sequins. And here I added the balloon and the thank you sentiment from the same Mama Elephant set and I drew the um, string back onto the little pop sentiment piece. If you are interested in interactive cards, here are two more of my recent really fun ones if you want to check those out. And they are, have each have a little bit of Copic coloring going on in them as well. And you're welcome to click around and watch anything else on my page that you'd like to as well. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye bye.